Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. I'm your host, Chris Gennaro, and today we have Beast Feel Tongues. How are you doing, guys? We're great. chilling. How are you? Good. I'm great. How are you doing? Cool. Usually we got the names on the bottom, uh, but today you're all on the same camera, so just, I guess, say your names and what you do. I'm Connor. I play drums. I'm Colton. I do vocals. I'm Alex, and I'm the guitar player. Cool. Uh, your new EP just dropped on Friday. Uh, let's just start with that and and talk about the recording process and and uh, and uh, you got a guys got a video too for it. Yeah, we did. Uh, we started recording the EP. Let me in probably January, <laughs> February. I think. February. We started recording drums. Then we did. I probably did guitars, and then we had shows. And we did that little weekend tour with Blemish and Wretched Inferno. And then we changed vocalists and we got Mr. Colton in there and we recorded probably throughout what September, probably. We recorded Something vocals like that, in yeah. September. Yeah, because we were done in October. October was really our kind of get the artwork, get everything put together and ready for the release. We did the video with Mind Decay for Immolate, which is out on his channel. And I think there's a couple other like, you know, metal promotion channels that are also <laughs> streaming it on there. I think it's on our Instagram too. So you can watch it on any of those things. And yeah, it just came out a few days ago and the reception has been quite well to it. We're pretty stoked about that. Yeah. Cool. How So how far into the writing process were you when you switched vocalists? Everything was done oh. <laughs> except vocals. So like yeah. I literally, we kind of, I think I had lyrics for one song. I had lyrics for Nephilim and so i got we got colton in and i was just like you know we did a couple rehearsals with them but i was like let's get him on the record and just see how it sounds and we did nephilim first one night and we we're like dude this sounds fucking sick so then we just started we probably did we go in order yeah we did we went, so yeah. i just like i just started writing lyrics because bird wrote all the lyrics on her previous stuff so i just kind of went back into like my old band where i would write lyrics so I went back into that vibe and kind of just got all this stuff and we would talk about patterns all the time. So really September was when we started vocals and got Colton in. Cool. A Anthony does go by pigeon though, doesn't he? Yeah, pigeon, pigeon bird. bird. Okay. It's all <laughs> bird, yeah. People that say Anthony, I always like, I'm like, who are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, oh, we, yeah, that's his name. Yeah, we had weeping on P pigeon didn't show up, but it, yeah. it it was fun to to talk about pigeon. <laughs> it's, fun, it's fun to say oh. <laughs> he's wonderful. Go on, go on. Yeah, we love bird. Okay, never... so so then what 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 happened? I, was it a weeping thing that he was like a, overcommitted or something? It's just kind of the kind of thing is that we had this weekend tour booked and stuff, and we just figured you know weeping is a much bigger and obviously kind of like more of a real like doing things kind of band than us and we were cool with that until we started playing more shows and everything we decided we wanted a vocalist that like you know we had to get our buddy nick from connor's other band drive kid and he's also in the drummer's band funeral doors we got him to show up and do vocals for us for the run which we're eternally grateful for him we just figured we wanted a singer that would be like our singer, you know what I mean? That opposed to like having to get fill in and stuff. So it's obviously nothing against Bird, and we didn't want to give him the ultimatum of weeping or bestial tongues because obviously he would go with weeping because weeping, like I said, is like weeping is awesome. Yeah. yeah. So like we got Colton. Yeah. We, he, me and Colton worked together, <laughs> and he said he did death metal vocals. So I was like, bet show up to a practice. Yeah. He did. <laughs> yeah. He was like, all right, prove it, and uh, I tried prove out. It. Yeah. him and connor were like you know your uh voice is pretty sexy yeah. so really all we had to yeah. work on was just like timing and stuff like that but yeah. eventually kind of nailed it so yeah is is yeah. this your first is this your first like big band or i did look you up on metal archives i didn't find anything so i just <laughs> <You're> <laughs> me? yeah yeah so believe it or not this is my first band ever okay. uh, and so that performance that you saw was my first performance ever uh, and it's and really fun. I've always been in, like involved yeah. in like heavy music, but uh, never really performed. So, um, let me in happens to be the name of the remake of one of my favorite yeah. horror movies. You must get asked this a lot, but is there any correlation there, or is it? it I assume it's not that, and it's something else. No, so, it's so like. When Bird was like Bird wrote all the lyrics for the consecrated and the split with Blemish, and we kind of always had this vampire kind of theme with it. So I just kind of went with that, and 
I was reading Salem's Lot by Stephen King at the time. And a lot of that, you know, you can't, vampires can't come into a place. They have to be let in or invited in. So the whole story behind that song is more of just kind of like in a world where people know about vampires and that vampires exist, like you're not going to let the vampire in. So it's kind of, you know, the vampire trying to do his thing, but nobody lets him in and eventually begging to be let in and stuff like that. I thought that same thing too, because let, yeah. let the right one in is also one of my favorite movies. It's so the, It's the fucking best. Um, yeah. Do you like the remake or do you like the Swedish version? I like the Swedish version better, yeah. but the remake was not horrific. It was okay. pretty good. It was pretty good. Um, you know, and, and it's funny, me and one of my friends were, were taking notes and comparing and contrasting the differences <laughs> the other day. So like I have all that fresh in my mind because that was only a couple months ago. But yeah. uh you, you know, for for being a remake, you, you usually remakes just shit the bed or they're they're you know or or they're remaking a bad movie and there's nowhere to go but up yeah right um but it was pretty decent you know yeah i, I like that the maker was like why are you remaking my movie because you know, <laughs> you should be remaking shitty movies not yeah, like, <laughs> movies, yeah. But, and i get that you know but yeah the fucking it's, that's a, such a good movie you know they're yeah. making like an hbo series of like a show of oh, yeah. I, I haven't seen anything about it except a trailer but I didn't know that. I just love vampires. Let's capitalize on so, it. Yeah. I think we, can, actually. We, should, we should sue them. Bro, we <laughs> already have your theme song, bro. Fucking sue them, bro. <laughs> uh, who did the art for the album? Uh, that's this guy we found on Instagram called... His, his Instagram handle is hellish.cave, C-A-V. And we've been a fan of his work for quite a while. He did our t-shirt. We have a... I don't remember. I think the name of the t-shirt, we called it the ritualistic mutilation shirt. It has like purple font and skeletons and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just kind of posted that and we were like, hey, let's just buy that and put it out on shirts because we did that tour. So it was like, we need merch to do that. And so I hit up, we hit up a couple people, but kind of like, we really liked his style. So we hit him up and was like, hey, are you open for commissions? And he was like, yeah. And I just told him, you know, I sent him all the lyrics and our kind of idea of, you know, like a we like like mysterious figures and like kind of <laughs> really like like the, the consecrated cover where it's just kind of you don't really know what's going on but at the same time you know it's not uh, good stuff it's going on red. It's just gone red yeah and it's and we like red. specific notes like we like black and red and stuff like that and he vampires yeah he just kind of hit he hit me up with that and i was like that's like fucking perfect nailed so, it yeah. absolutely nailed i like it. like the comic booky kind of nature of it yeah Cool. Uh, well, we already know that you have some tunes about vampires. What 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 other uh, types of lyrical stuff do you got going on? I have no idea. All the songs that let me in are about vampires. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you okay, like... just vampires. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I actually like love writing, and so the songs I've been writing recently were poetry. I it are all about vampires. So I think that's the theme. There's some songs yeah. that Bird wrote about other, like you know, Evangelion. Like, like, I think there's a couple songs about Evangelion. Uh, isn't a Shards of View about the Castlevania show? Castlevania, Castlevania or Vampires. Vampire. <laughs> and I know um, Bestial Tongues is about like demons. Okay, like for sure. Like it's like uh, yeah. Transmogrified is the the night creatures from Castlevania, so not necessarily vampires, but kind of like you know evil dark creatures created by vampires which is also kind of what silent ritual is about but also you know they're kind of vampires so, yeah. <laughs> so we're in the vampires, in this <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of vampires. <laughs> well if you're fans of let let the right one in then then you 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 at least know good vampire stuff yeah, so. yeah. yeah for sure <laughs> uh you're split with blemish. I was kind of interested in that because there there was no physical release, right? It was just digital. There were tapes made for it. I oh, think okay. it's still available too. Yeah. For Frozen Screams and yeah. print. Okay. So I didn't I didn't see that on Bandcamp, but that makes more sense now because I was like, what's the point of a split if there's no oh. physical stuff? But okay, so there's so and you're you're gonna keep doing stuff with frozen screams. Is it just always gonna be tapes or you you thinking about any vinyl or uh CD? Well we were talking about vinyl. I want to do CDs too. We just gotta look into kind of like a distro that would do that for us which we, i'm kind of looking around for stuff like i know wretched inferno who's another frozen streams fan they just did their release on cd as well so we'll kind of shop around and look at that but yeah frozen streams is the is the jam uh johnny freeze rules we want to do 
we were thinking about doing vinyl for this, but like with the money and everything, we figured wait until I think our next big project, we have a little teaser project that we kind of want to do. But I think our next big project will be like a full length. I think it would be better to push the money into a full length rather than just kind of this EP and do that. And then the other thing, our teaser thing is uh, it's a couple of, a couple of leftover tracks from the blemish split that were, we had too many songs for the blemish split. Okay. So literally all we have to do is throw Colton on the songs and those two songs are done. And we're talking about doing a death cover potentially. And then that might just be cassette only release. We might not even put that on digital or something, but Vinyl would be really cool. CD, I'm looking into doing and just kind of finding like the best option in doing that. Yeah. But I Donnie would, Freeze is the dude. I would love vinyl. No. Like that would be really awesome yeah. for me. We all sure. collect vinyl. So like, yeah. we obviously yeah. want our stuff on vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> Any love for seven inches? Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have a bunch of seven inches actually. Yeah. That was the original plan with the blemish split. But because of COVID, you know, vinyl was backed up so much. They, I think Johnny Freeze said that uh if we did the vinyl it wouldn't have been like we would have gotten it now you know what i mean so it's like kind of like us and blemish were both like well we're already gonna have stuff in the works in the future so let's just do the seven inch now and or sorry the tape now and we'll worry about maybe if like the tape did well maybe we could do seven inch limited editions and stuff like that but i think vinyl's still all backed up because of like adele and taylor swift and more important (laughs) artists (laughs) uh i guess let's talk about the blemish split. I, I I assume that you guys used to play together or something, and that's how you got hooked up. Or well, we always played together. You know, you were in a band with Kenny. Yeah, I was in a band a couple of years ago called Program with Kenny. Uh, he did Noise. You know, that was like a punk band, and then that fizzled out. And we, you know, kind of just went to our own se- pro- separate projects. But yeah, Kenny's the man. Yeah, yeah. I I did listen to that blemish, uh, the blemish tunes. They're really good. So yeah, blemish, and, yeah. great. So and it's it's nice because you probably I can't imagine that a fan of yours wouldn't like them or vice versa. So yeah, it we made a lot of sense. Well, we thought I I thought it was such a cool split because like I knew Nick, the drummer for Blemish, I think ten years ago, almost exactly. Yeah, we met at like a Cannibal Corpse concert when we were like fourteen. And, like, became Facebook friends, and then we had college classes together. So, like, yeah, I've known Nick class. forever. Yeah. And uh, what I what I thought was cool about the Blemish Split was that they're both – both sides are just, like, definitely grindcore, but they're two very different styles, you know? Like, yeah. our style is a lot more, like, speed-based, and, like, we're a little bit more technical than them, where Blemish's side is, like, the more grosser, heavier side. Blush. But it's still, like, grindcore, so it's a kind of a good split if you're, like, a fan of more – speedy kind of technical stuff you have our side but if you want the heavier slow nasty stuff you have their side as well so it's like both kind of a good dichotomy big word yeah it's a good word <laughs> that's, that's a really good word <laughs> it's funny i i did i did see alex uh, a couple of your old videos playing guitar and your fingers are disgustingly long and nimble <laughs> I, like i i have such fat fingers i am just in <laughs> awe of how you can play those notes cleanly. Oh, no. <laughs> like I it, it is I don't know. It's it's not a question. It's just really impressive. I feel oh, like I, I need to tell you that. That means a lot. I always tell that to to because I, I teach guitar and stuff. I always tell it to my students that like I sh- I'll show them chords that have like big stretches. And I'm just like, well if you practice, your fingers will get used to that big stretch and stuff like that. And they just look at me and they're like, I can't do that. I can't do that. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, I know. I feel for them because I I see that, and I'm I I'm like my fat. I can't you know, no. I can't even hit one key at a time on the computer. I just no. I can't even imagine playing that chord. Um, <laughs> yeah, I play bass by the way, so I don't need okay. to worry, I don't need to worry about Fets that. Are further but, away. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. So so you're the new stuff that you can't did did Pigeon do vocals or that? And you're just gonna scratch them, or you just recorded just the music? Uh, um. For the like leftover, you said you had you had leftover tracks from the from the blemish stuff. No, those don't have vocals at all. We kind of okay. did the sessions with the drums, and I recorded guitar. Jack did bass for those too, and then we realized that the song we had too many songs to it's split just, on to sit so on one side. We just never so, finished them. Yeah, we just figured, and those were like the two songs that we decided when we had the group of songs that were like these two are kind of not as good. Like we still really like the songs, but they're kind of like 
it, we knew going in that like we might have to drop a couple songs or whatever. So we said these couple songs aren't as good as these other songs. But they're know? still sick. Yeah. <laughs> they are sick. Actually. They're they're, they're not really like sick. bad songs. They were 100 percent supposed to be on there. They were just tacked on. But like in the grand scheme of we have to drop two songs, we're like, we'll drop these two. Yeah. Like they don't even have names. I think their songs three and four. Yeah. It's still yeah. on my Google Drive. Yeah. <laughs> um so alex i saw that you do some mixing for tage is that correct yeah i do a few i've done probably like five or six of the mind decay videos which is always really cool to like kind of get the bands like 200 stab wounds yeah. was a really cool one that i got to work on because i'm like just like a big exsanguinated. Fan of it. exsanguinated me and connor were both at necrofest and exsanguinated i think was connor's favorite band they are so sick. And the fact that i got to mix them was pretty sick <laughs> So you just you when you say you mix them, you mix the show then? No. Well, so what, what happens is Tage gets the multi-tracks from the board. Oh, he does. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then he'll send them to me because I can't I obviously can't be at every show, especially like Tage's, because Tage will just like kind of go to shows and do it, you know, with my job and schedule and stuff. I can't do that. But he'll go to show. He sent me he's sending me Fulci from when Fulci was at uh I think the Meat Locker show was the one they went to. But he's he's gonna send me that, and I'll just mix that. And he has the video already, so I'll mix it up. I'll send it to him, and then he'll put it to the video, and then upload it. Okay, that's fine. So, what, how many tracks is that usually? And uh, with Vitus, I think it's usually like twenty four. Oh is shit! It... I I wouldn't even think it would be that. Uh, wow. Yeah, there's. I was surprised because the first one I did for him was a uh, Depygus. If you don't, if you guys don't know Depygus. <laughs> I don't know Depygus <laughs> slaps. I didn't know them until until he sent me the thing, and I was like, like if you're a fan of like Autopsy and stuff like that, it's like Autopsy but like kind of better. Autopsy like Infotego but like better. Um, and he sent me that, and that was like literally a show that was like at a VFW. So I remember texting Craig, my buddy Craig, who's like the New Jersey audio guy in my opinion. Uh. He, I texted him. I was like, "Dude, I don't know what the fuck to expect from this like little board at this VFW." But he sent me back, and I think it was a full drum kit. There were the guitars and vocals and everything, so we had everything there. So it all kind of worked out. Is and there a lot of bleed from the track in the in the tracks? I, I would think there would be from a live performance like that, but really, it depends on the vocalist. The vocal is really the biggest bleed part because everything else I could kind of like I'll let it work with it, you know. But with vocals, you know, especially heavy vocals, you got to compress it really hard and get like, you know, I think we did one of our shows. I don't know when it's coming out, but when we played Vitus with Blemish and Wretched Inferno, I actually told, uh, I told Nolan Bandit. Yeah. (laughs) And Nolan Bandit. I told, I told uh, Tage to actually use the camera audio for our set because the way our vocals were, the the vocals, when he wasn't singing, he was kind of pointing at the mic at the drums, like just kind of holding it to his side. So like the bleed was crazy. The guitar tone wasn't that great. You can kind of tell that we were the first band of the night. So the sound guy was still getting everything organized. So I said, I'd rather have like a really raw, gnarly camera audio set than a bad sounding multi-track. But most of the time it's, depends on the vocals. Like 200 Sabins wasn't bad because he stands right in front of the mic the whole time. And he's a good vocalist, you know? So if you're a good vocalist and your voice is loud and heavy, it won't matter how much bleed there is because when you go into the mic, you're going to be louder than all the bleed, Mm. you know? Sometimes it's hard. Mutilatred was hard. I don't mean to shit on them, but they have a quiet vocalist. (laughs) So when he did his vocals, they were really quiet. So I couldn't really, like, you can kind of, if you listen to that mix, you'll notice the vocals are a little low. Because I didn't want to turn them too much and have like all that vote, all that symbol bleed and all that stuff. I was listening to one of your old, one of your older tracks, um, and I d- definitely felt like there was a second guitar on there. So I got to ask if there's a plan to do that. Do you do you try to avoid doing second guitar since you're a one guitar band? Like, what's the? Is there any stories there? Well, we're definitely much more of like a studio like recording kind of band so when it comes to doing like live stuff i usually focus on the main guitar part but i'm also if i think a part should have a harmony i think the part should have a harmony and we kind of talked about potentially doing the idea yeah we talked about having a second guitar player but i think it would just muddy things up too much because 
it's kind of more of like a raw and sloppy live thing you know no so i think that would just muddy things up too much it has to be the right person okay and yeah. just kind of fit in with our whole vibe of just kind of like we're pretty laid back and chilling and everything and just have to be the same vibe and like you said if it's yeah if we can't do a couple harmonies every once in a while live like it doesn't really matter like if anything okay. i'll do the harmony, but jack's still playing the main riff on bass so it's still kind of a harmony Con okay so but you so you definitely do two guitars when you're recording and then you just fudge it when you play live for sure like okay. like i said if there's a part like in in the song emulate there's some harmon harmonized parts yeah but like I like it's not worth like we gotta get a second guitar player so that they could play the minor third harmony and emulate. Like it's it's, it's not like that important when we're playing live, you know. But in this when we were recording it, I was like, oh, this part should have a harmony because it would sound badass. <laughs> um was Connor, did you mention that you play with a, another band also? I play um I play in a band called Phantom. Um I play in a band called Drive Kid. Um, and I'm subbing in for a band called Still Ghosts right now. I kind of just like sub in for people when they need me, honestly. <laughs> like Drive Kid, Bestial Tongues, and Phantom are my main bands. Okay. And Still Ghost is in need of a drummer and th their music is great. So I, I'm helping them out right now. Um, I did a run with a band, Teenage Halloween, earlier this year. Um, they're from around the area. And I played a gig with the band Pillow Wind. Uh, a couple weeks ago they're yeah, awesome you know so i just kind of you're a busy fucking dude <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> somebody oh, if, you know if i like their music and they want me to play drums for them you know like it's that little oh, yeah. drummer syndrome yeah yeah okay. i i <laughs> you drummers in the scene yeah. considering how like sought after and hard to find good drummers are i i have a feeling your phone might be ringing after this interview because <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, send me the links for all those bands. I'll put them in the description. People can check them out. Um, I, thank you. That'll be cool. Um, anybody else uh, you want to shout out, talk about uh, stuff that, that's been influencing you lately, that you've been listening to, other bands that we should we should take a, a, a look for? Um, I guess, influencing new stuff? I guess the bands that kind of influenced the past stuff where like discordance axis and pig destroyer we I, I think all of us were in more of like a death metal kind of place then full of but, hell full yeah of full hell of hell long. definitely full of hell but now i'm listening to a lot more like jazz fusion and stuff like that and imperial triumphant is a good cross section yeah. for that so I think that's a big gonna be a big influence for yeah. the next one. Worm rot. Yeah. We <laughs> played with that. Oh man, that, that album Hiss yeah. Alex just introduced me to it's blew my balls off. Yeah. And worm rot, rot awesome. rolls. And we just played with Noel back in uh June. I, I know Noel. They're they're good. Noel's and awesome. like, Noel's great. I was a fan of theirs beforehand, but like seeing them live, I was like, fuck this band's this band's like one of those moments like this band's better than every other band I've ever seen. <laughs> like <laughs> Like their live shows are absolutely insane. So like I've been listening to the, their stuff a lot for like because like now that the record's out, I'm kind of in like writing mode again. Just because that's just how we work as a band. Like I said, we don't play too many shows. We play some shows here and there and stuff. But like I, my favorite part about this band is that we just keep writing music and recording it and stuff. So like I'm in like writing mode and like the new Noel album is definitely like let me get inspired by something that the Worm Rod album Full Pillow is. Imperial Triumphant, we want to start bringing in that weird jazzy stuff into. When you write stuff, do you ever use, like, do you write everything live or do you sometimes write to drum machine stuff and then bring it to, to uh, the, the guys? I like to write whatever comes to mind and like i'll send connor down i was like dude this might suck but yeah this is what i wrote yeah you always send me like finished demos with drum machine stuff yeah. going on and that's you know i'll i'll add some of my own little stuff but uh there's right. a lot of stuff <laughs> for the for the first two it was mo more so just going off what the drum machine was but let me in was more of like a, a collaborative effort for sure yeah and yeah. like uh 
I was going to say something, but I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, About drum machines yeah. and stuff. No. <laughs> well, I, I always like doing it, but like kind of not as a, like, this is what you have to play. Like, it, yeah. it, it's really just like the drums are there because it's like, I want blast beats for this part. Yeah. Or like a, a D beat or something like that. It's not like that's not what you have to do, but this kind of like, that's like the general idea. And like the perfect example is a song like Immolate on the new record where there's like, there's like three demos of that where like I sent the demo I was like I like these riffs but the song sucks <laughs> so so we just spent the day me and Connor in the practice space and we just kind of rewrote the whole song and I think it was pretty same thing with Hollowed Out was like that too where we wrote it and was like this kind of sucks but let's jam it out and feel it out and everything because like we like the riffs that are there but the structure is just not fully there yet because I just kind of write I'm like very fluid and just kind of like here's some riffs I like when we try to organize it and then yeah. send the ideas and then you know we work on it together to kind of flesh out how everything goes. So if you if you do mixes for Tage, do you do I can I assume that you are heavily involved in the mixes for your EPs? I mixed all of them. <laughs> You're the mix. You you just Yeah, I you, mixed did you record them too or or did you go to studio for that? Craig Smith is our drum engineer. Yes. We record drums with our buddy Craig. Yeah. He's All cool. three of the EPs were with Craig on doing the drums. Uh, then I'll record guitar in my room. But we this was the first time we did reamps with Craig because Craig has a bunch of amps. So I went to his place and we just kind of reamped everything. What does reamping mean? So I record DI. So I'm plugging like right into the interface. Okay. I'll go to Craig's and we'll basically what it is is you replay the di out of an amp and you re-record the amp okay so we super interesting what does di stand for uh direct injection direct injection so it's like the purest you're literally just plugging your guitar into the computer so there's no amp there's no nothing it's just that's your guitar so you're basically recording your signal and then so what do we use? We use the JCM 900 and a PRS Archon head is the let me in tone. And so what we did was we took every track and we played it through those amps and just recorded it. And then we had the file there. And basically the reason we did that is because when I'm recording guitar, I don't want to worry about my tone the whole time I'm playing. I want to focus more on my playing. So I just have like a shitty amp sim up. And record with that, and then I'll send, out, like I said, I'll go over to Craig's and we'll just mess with tones for a whole day instead of wasting a day where it could be recording, actually, you know, playing with amps. <laughs> That's cool. It's funny because we talk to a lot of bands about the recording process and stuff. Because obviously, I mean, I mean, I've been in bands and stuff, so I'm always interested in it. And that's the first time I think I've heard of somebody doing that, but it <laughs> makes so much sense. Yeah. It's like, like I learned about it but when I was in college, I think. But like it, a lot of people do it just because it saves time. And, you know, like a lot of times, like I know people like Colin Richardson, who does like, you know, he did like Cannibal Corpse and Napalm Death and more modern like Trivium stuff. He always does it, but he'll have his amp, like he'll mic up an amp too while they're recording. So it's like, this is what we want. But eventually, you know, as you go through the cycle, you don't want to be stuck with that tone. If you're like, eh, I'm not really feeling this tone. If you don't take a DI, your beat you that's right, the tone right, right. You. so like on the consecrated i took a di and used my angle but I don't, we didn't do reamps then we just kind of went with it which i wish we did di we did reamps and stuff like that but in the end like that ep just you know it is what it is and it's cool and we did the same thing with bass i don't even think we reamp we just put different amp sims on it and then Colton, we recorded in my classroom. <laughs> and then yeah. and then I mixed it. And this one, Craig mastered. Craig mastered this and the blemish split. And Jack, before he was in the band, he mastered the Deconsecrated EP. That was before he was in the band. The Deconsecrated EP was really just me getting all my friends together and making heavy music. <laughs> uh, where do you teach? I teach at a high school. Oh, oh, are you a, you're a high school teacher? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it, it's funny because I, 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 my son or my, one of my son's friends brought a, a home an instrument list and it was like, what instrument do you want to play? But, and it was, it was all or, orchestral stuff. It was like, yeah. there was no guitar anywhere. There was no bass. There was, and and I'm always weirded out, like, like the, 
offer guitar. Like, why yeah. this kid doesn't want to play tuba? Like, I, I, <laughs> yeah. they tried to make me play tuba when I was a kid. I didn't. I wanted to rock out. I didn't want to play yeah. tuba. So what? What you know? And I, to me, as a music teacher, does that frustrate you that they're not like? I mean, I don't know if you've seen the same thing, but does it frustrate you that they're just they're d almost dismissive of, of guitar playing? No, we have guitar. I'm the guitar. Oh, you have guitar. Okay, I'm guitar teacher. <laughs> Yeah, so guitar actually, and piano. So wait, that's not public school then, is it? No. no. Oh, okay. That, that would explain why. No. Like how me and Alex met was I worked at the same high school. I was the tech guy. Like I did the computer stuff. Uh, and Alex was a teacher there. So we met up and yeah, pretty yeah. much how he learned that I did the vocals. Making all the kids listen to death metal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to say the name of the, the school want, you want, but is it a performing school or is it it's just a... No, it's just a normal, just, just you know... Just a private school. Private high school. Just a normal private school. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, the instrument list thing that I was talking about, that was definitely public school. And it was like, you know, clarinet, flute, trumpet, saxophone, you know, and, and then that was yeah. it. Yeah, you know, I guess you know. it's just like they need to, Very you know. Shit. Yeah. Well, I guess they just want, you know, like we need a marching band. Yeah, we need band. this kind of band, you know. But whatever. Is that is that it? It's the whole. It would be funny if like that's that's the whole conspiracy is to to funnel kids into the marching band so they can have a high school football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Um, well, that's a, I played trombone for probably three or four years, but then like I started getting really into guitar and you know like metal and stuff and then i started my own bands and i just kind of fell off that train and like you know like you'd get in trouble for not doing band i remember like i got written up because i skipped my trombone class it was like i don't want to play trombone and like <laughs> did any of the trombone playing help you with the guitar um that was so long ago to really tell but i guess just kind of a sense of you know playing like i, I tell my students you know playing is the most important thing like just kind of, you know, being in the band, even if it's, you know, a pep band versus a metal band, be just being there and playing with other people is really the most important thing. Because, like, I'm in charge of the band at the school, and I tell them, it's like, it doesn't matter how m well you know your drum part, you got to be able to pay attention to what the guitar player is doing, what the singer is doing. Because, you know, if someone messes up, you want to be able to, like, okay, they messed up, let me kind of catch up to where they are now. Or if you mess up, you want them to be able to kind of catch up to where you are. That way, you know, it just doesn't all fall apart. You want to kind of be aware of everyone, which is why I like this band, because I could always trust Connor, and I feel like Connor could trust me. Like, when we played in Rhode Island, Connor started the wrong song. I did. But we all were right there with him. <laughs> yeah. It was like we were, I think we were supposed to play Jesus in Hellfire, but he went right into the song the Bestial Tongues. Yeah. So, like, by the time the blast beats came in, we were ready. We were there. We were like, oh, he's playing this song now. <laughs> Which, like, you know, if we weren't paying attention and, we, and he started playing that song, and while we were still playing Jesus in Hellfire, it would have been awful. But instead, we, we went just with it and it worked little, out. You know, yeah. So, I think um, just playing is like the most important thing. So, you're going to be playing more shows, I take it, coming up to support the album, the EP? Or like whatever. We're, uh, I'm trying to put together some sort of, not even a release show at this point, but just a fun show again, just kind of like, like when we started this band, it was like I said, it was just kind of me and all my friends doing it. So I've, I'd like to have a show with like throw weeping on there if, we, if they're around. Oxalate would be fun to have. Uh, World Eater, just all of our fun. Burnt Offerings is a cool band. Just all like our friends in the scene and stuff. Just have like one cool show, and it'll kind of be like our release party or whatever you want to say. Because even at that last show, we played every song on the EP. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really. Well, yeah, I mean, that was before the record was even out. <laughs> Right. I mean, do you, do you, I mean, do you, don't you kind of have to play your old stuff? Elsewise, you're only going to be, you know, playing for 20 minutes or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we, we take, I think the difference from our tour set to this set was we took two songs off, but we added four. <laughs> so, like, and yeah. the two songs we added, we took off for like two minutes long. So it's like, oh, we have 20 minutes. That's, we have plenty Perfect. of time. We could yeah. play everything. <laughs> We can, there's only one song yeah. we haven't played live, which I don't think we can play live. Yeah, but I, but I took a recording of the set at practice, and it's only like 22 minutes. No, so yeah. we could play everything. We could no play problem. every song. <laughs> it would be like a half hour if we played all our songs. Ritualistic Mutilation is the only song we've never played. Yeah, and we, that would be a hard song to play live. Yeah. We should play it. We could try it. <laughs> 
um as we're getting to time and you wanted anything else you want to you want to throw in there before we wrap it up uh shout outs who do you want to shout out Connor? uh shout out to mm -hmm. nick shout out to nick from drive kid and nick from blemish okay okay here wait <laughs> start here uh-oh uh, shout out to blemish shout out to wretched inferno my boys um, is there any other my children we should shout out uh we should shout out uh uh that other band that just released music on Frozen Screams. Uh, Ruin. Ruin is... All the Frozen Scream bands. Concrete Caveman. Concrete is Caveman. Sick. Weeping, you know, of course. Weeping. The homies in Weeping. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of bands. World Eater. Really good friends with World Eater, if you guys know World Eater. Oxley and Come Mierda. Um, Brat. We just played with Harry Cool. I love yeah. Brat, yeah. Harry Cool. Um, the credits. This is the whole just like credits. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I don't. Even, I don't. Even, like, just every local Jersey heavy wow. band. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <The scene. laughs> yeah, no, I'll I'll put Shout all that to... stuff in the description, and and people can check it out. I mean, I, I all the a lot of those bands are bands that I've had on the show already. So I I think if you've been following my stuff, then you're probably familiar with most of those guys. I um, give a shout out to Tage. Tage is a shout out. Mind Decay for being the GOAT. <laughs> yeah, Mind Decay is awesome. We're all really lucky to have someone like him around. That 17-year-old yeah. makes us all so happy. <laughs> yeah. He does awesome work. We went out for food after we did the video, and we were going to this place called Tommy's, and he's like, is this a restaurant or a bar? Because I don't think I could go. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a restaurant. You're good. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is funny because I, I was corresponding with him for a little while before I met him in person. And then he, you know, you you don't. Yeah, he's he's young. <laughs> <laughs> but he's uh, professional. Yeah, cool. yeah. He showed up with that whole lighting system at like the jam room. And I was like, I didn't know if we were allowed to even film a video there. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, let's just try to keep it low key. And Tate comes in with all these lights, like these floodlights and stuff. I'm like, oh, shit, we're going to get in trouble. <laughs> but I, I just. Anything. I, I wish I had his passion at that age. I, yeah. I would be. I would have been much better off in life. I think. Let me say, we went to Necrofest. He was just running all over the place the whole time and just like, oh. doing interviews with bands, filming the shows, and yeah, stuff. Made a doc Necrofest documentary. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I was there. I I saw that that whole thing going on. Uh, him oh, yeah. and Jackie were running around. I saw. Yeah. Which was kind of funny. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, he was he was in his element, man. He was like. Oh, for sure. Um, but no, he's a really good dude, and and, and I think he, he, like you need people like him in the scene to like put in the work to you know the promotion and 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 all the video work he, he, he's doing is just is this crazy good for for everything because he gets like the big bands and people will watch him for that, but then you know he'll throw up something like us. Which, like, if you throw it up on any other channel, it just kind of goes by. But, like, you know, I know he did that Exodus video that has, like, 50,000 views or something. So you can only imagine how many subscribers he got from that that are now forced to see all, like, all the New Jersey local bands. At the very least, like, even if they don't watch the video, just, like, you seeing the name fly the name, by. Yeah, even that. Like, oh, I'm familiar with that. Or, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, it totally really helps. Yeah, for um, sure. But uh, thanks a lot, guys. I, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, send me those links. Awesome. I'll get everything in the description. And uh, looking forward to hearing your new stuff. Uh, thanks, man. Well, Thank you. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. Cool. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Bye.